All right, so thank you very much for coming this, this morning, and I'm super excited to talk about habits, mostly about productive, productivity habits, but uh, I'm going to share at the beginning some of the things in life that I learned at the beginning, like when I started developing my own routines, and started like waking up early, exercising, and so on and so on. And then we have these questions here by your, by your team, so I'm going to answer these, and then we're going to have a short discussion. And uh, I'm not very aware of how much time it will take, but probably it's going to fit in two hours. <laughs> we, can, we can have a break if you want. But uh, So shortly about myself, I was working and like developing my own habits for the last three years. Since I was uh, in London, when I started working 9 to 5 jobs and then freelancing on the side. And I was so much interested in my health, that I decided why not put exercising before. Uh, before going to, to work because after work I felt so tired and sometimes I would just slack off and say like I'm not, it's, it's too much. So since the last three years passed I, I, I decided to, to actually switch from design and development and then building digital products more into self-development and habits and behavior psychology. So currently my biggest project is working on a book and the book is going to be, well it's, it's currently in the draft but it's going to be about Habits of Success, and uh, for the last year I've been publishing about habits, and uh, I've been publishing on Forbes, on Huffington Post, on Time, and on other big magazines, and people were started to reach out, and then Ilma asked me a lot of things, but the thing is, I'm, I'm not an expert, I'm just very interested in it, so whatever I'm going to say, it's not the only and the, the right way to do it, but if it, if it worked for me, it might work for you, if you just adjust it to your own lifestyle. So, that's the introduction. And uh, now about habits, probably. So there are a couple of different, uh, different strategies how, or like theories how habits are formed. So once uh, one uh, theory says that there are three parts: there's cue or trigger, there's uh, action or the routine, and then the third one is is the reward. So the trigger can be, for example, I'm very, I'm very bored when I'm working a very hard task at work. I'm very bored, so I'm going to go to Facebook. So the trigger is boredom. And triggers can be internal or external. So for example, if there is too much light, then like natural habit is that your, your eyes are going to close because if there is too much light, this is automatic. But the trigger is external, it's not internal. But at the same time, if you think about too much light, then this internal trigger will cause the action, which is also the same. So that can be external and internal triggers and that can be feelings, it can be memories, that can be advertisement, that can be other people, that can be music, anything. And then the action is actually the, the routine. So for example, if you are bored, you open up Facebook. This is the action. You just type Facebook and then you log in. And uh, the reward is of course, if you are bored, you get some news or you, you're going to see what your friends are eating and you're going to be jealous about their vacation or something. <laughs> So, so this is one theory, and other theory uh, by uh, near uh, Isle is about it's more about like digital products. So, for example, we have LinkedIn, and it's a perfect example of these four uh, four steps of, of habit formation. So, we have the first one, which is the same trigger. Then we have the action, we have the reward, and we have investment. So, a real life example is I just met Ignis, and I say, okay, I wanna connect with him, so I go to LinkedIn, that's the trigger, I met him. The action is I go to LinkedIn and search for your name, that's the action. And the reward is I, I invite you to my friend list or like connection list. And then the investment is that you get these rewards and you see that you need to invest a little bit more of time to actually build up all of these benefits. So I want to connect with all of you and I need to actually spend time connecting with you, so that means that I need to invest my time. But the reward is actually multiplying each time I get I get to, to know all of you, so my number of like connections and friends is increasing. So that's the that's the fourth part, and this usually is uh, used for digital products, but it can also be used for for your personal life. So if you want to look better, you go exercise more. So you need to invest more time in uh, in exercising. You need to wake up earlier. You need to eat, eat, eat healthy and clean and so on. Um, so this is the basic of how to form a habit. But this is very like woo-woo and scientific shit and I don't like uh, talking about too much of that, but I like more, more like practical things. So I'm gonna talk about uh, one of the things that's mentioned here 
or Ilma mentioned me, habit stacking. And uh, I really like habit stacking because it's, it's, it just works like magic for me. So for example, when I was uh, last year in Thailand, I felt that my morning routine is kind of just like, okay, I, I, I wake up early, I meditate, I eat, but I don't do it very consistently. So I decided, okay, I'm going to check this, uh, it's called the morning miracle. And it's basically the habit stacking. So you need to decide what you're going to do the first thing after you wake up. So for example, I wake up at 5. And then the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to drink two glasses of water. And then after that, I'm going to do a third thing, which is going to be stretching for 5 to 10 minutes. And after that, I'm going to eat. After that, I'm going to meditate. And one of these like uh, habits, they, they always need to go one after another. And the thing is that you start building your habit stacking on already established habit. So for example, if you are brushing your teeth the first thing in the morning, it's already established, you have a lot of uh, wire connections in your brain, so it's very automatic, you do it uh, on autopilot, so you don't really need to think about it. So for example, you want to start reading in the morning, so you decide to start reading right after you brush your teeth. And you need to make it very, very easy, so usually just like one page is super easy to do it. So after brushing your teeth, you just write it down. I wake up at 7, I brush my feet, and then after that I'm going to read one page. So it's so ridiculously easy to do, but at the beginning it's all about, it's not about performance or like judging yourself against others, but just like getting into that action and trying to perform it all over and over again until it becomes automatic. And then of course like you want to start seeing results after that, so you can increase two pages, three pages. And once you feel that that habit is already established, then you're not even thinking about it. So for example, you put down the, uh, the, the teeth brush, and then you, you just instantly grab the book. So it's already automatic, and you don't need to think about it. Then you can start stack, stacking another habit on top of that. Or habits can be stacked on other habits, like the evening, for example, before bed, maybe you are checking Facebook, and instead of that, you can do, or after checking Facebook, you can actually meditate for 60 seconds or just take them uh, deep breaths before you sleep. So that's how I decided to to work on my morning miracle, which is like basically habit stacking, just stacking one habit on top of another. And uh, I can tell you that in in just a, just like a week, my, my 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 life completely changed because I was doing these like three hours of different habits, and my morning miracle instead of like being thirty minutes turned into three hours from five to eight, and. Uh, Currently, my, my morning uh, miracle is like waking up at 5, then drinking two glasses of water, then, uh, then stretching for 10, 5 to 10 minutes, then I'm going to eat usually healthy breakfast, in, in case it's weekend, <laughs> I'm going to eat a lot of chunky shit, then, then uh, after eating I'm going to meditate, after meditation I'm going to read, after reading I'm going to write. So I was playing a little bit with, uh, with uh, reading and writing, but I, I felt that after reading, I feel more alert and I have more ideas. So I switched writing with reading. So I'm, re I'm reading first and then after that I'm going to write. And usually I'm going to steal some ideas from that, write, from that reading. And after, after writing, I'm going to define my most and more important task for the day. So I'm always like super overconfident about what I can do in my day. And I just put like 15 things on my to-do list and then of course like nothing happens. And I decided, okay, there's a, only one thing I need to do today and I'm going to feel like happy or okay, at least okay with this day. And uh, then, then I started using the, the list called 1, 2, 3. I don't know which theory is that. But basically you have number one, you put it on your, on your uh, to-do list and this is the most important task for today. So for me it can be very time consuming or just like very mentally consuming. So like writing a contract and then sending it to, to my client or just uh, you know doing something very uh, how to say very hard for myself or like very uh, low power resistant so I don't really want to do it but it's very important even though it's like it takes like 30 minutes sometimes I would push it for, for, for weeks I wouldn't touch it so either I do this or either I do something that is very time consuming for four or five hours so let's say writing a blog post, well-researched blog post. So I'm going to put it as number one, and then I can break it down to priorities, two priorities, number two, and then three priorities, number three. And the, the trick with one, two, three list is that number one, it doesn't really have any time limitation. It's just the most important thing you need to do today.
there are two two items numbered number twos. So one item cannot take more than two hours. So that's very easy to remember. So two tasks each uh, two hours, four hours, and this can be just a breakdown of the first, uh, the most important uh, task that you wrote at the beginning, and then three three tasks uh, by thirty minutes each. So that can be just like you know paying for the paying bills and then uh, contacting my 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 friends, calling mom and so on and so on, all the not not so important things that you still need to do. So. After I define my list, and this is already probably 7.30 I think, then I'll do affirmations, which is basically just uh, saying I'm already enough, which means that I don't really need to become better, I just need to really understand that I'm enough at this moment, and uh, I have enough money, I have uh, enough friends, I have enough skills, and just put that positivity in myself for the day, and then I will do this is the, word, the hardest word ever. Visualization, which means that that uh, I would just sit down. Sometimes I would close my eyes, sometimes not. And for just like 60, 60 seconds, I would think of uh, how my day would look like. So, for example, if I decided to write a blog post, I'm gonna imagine how I'm actually opening uh, my laptop, how I'm researching, I'm, I'm seeing how I'm, I'm being distracted by Facebook, and then I close it after a couple of seconds, and then. I I see how I publish the post, and this really helps me to, to visualize the process. And then uh, sometimes, if you do it very well, you also like think about okay, oh, there there are going to be I'm going to be hungry in the middle of it. What I'm going to do about it? I'm just going to push you know push through for 20 minutes. Then I'm going to finish the first draft. I'm going to go eat and so on and so on. So this helps me to to really visualize results before they are real. So after visualizing, it's already probably. 8 or 7.50 something, then I would go to exercise for, for at least like 1 hour, 50 minutes, and then I would come back, eat second breakfast, and then I would start working on my like, uh, on my uh, normal like, uh, most important task, the daily routine, uh, it's just for the beginning, and, and why it's so important, I think for everyone here, is that most of that morning routine thing is your me time, your personal time that you never spend on uh, on yourself because you're thinking, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not really that important because my work is more, most important, I need to have energy for work and stuff and blah, blah, blah. But the thing is that all the time you want to start like reading more or like you want to start exercising or you want to start creating, composing music, whatever, whatever it is on your mind, you're always thinking, uh, I'm just going to do it when I have time. So why I started waking up early, which was probably the first uh, habit that I started developing. Uh, two years, I think, ago, I, I was writing a book, an e-book with the other American designer about mobile design. And at the beginning, it was very exciting for like two weeks ago. And then, and then it was priority number three. So I, I didn't really like spend that much of, of time throughout the day because I had uh, freelance clients, I was, I was running my blog. And then I was uh, I just moved back to, to Vilnius or seeing some friends and then in the middle of the day as a freelancer you can just oh yeah just, they just go get grab a lunch and then you need to finish the client work and there's no time for book. So then my American uh, designer co-author she said, well before we started writing the book, we said that we both are allowed to kick each other's asses if we are not doing the thing. So she said, like, dude, come on, we're meeting in, in Prague in Czech Republic in, in two weeks and you didn't even finish like thirty percent of the book. So I'm like, oh shit, I need to start doing something. So, so the first thing I did, I was like, okay, the book is the most important thing I want to finish now in the next two weeks. So I decided to wake up at 6 instead of 7 o'clock, and then one hour just stare at screen and write whatever is on my, on my mind. So first couple of days were just like staring at, at screen and writing two sentences. Other days would turn into like thousands of words. But the average the average uh, speed was increasing because I was actually doing the work no matter like uh, how much or how, how little I was doing every day. So I think that's, that's very important for yourself to define your me time in the morning and it can be just 30 minutes. You can, uh, you can write, uh, just journal what you felt yesterday or what you want to accomplish today for like 5 minutes. You can meditate or just like uh, think about your day and uh, focus on your breath for, for 1 minute, 2 minutes. Uh, then uh, you can you can exercise for five to ten minutes, do some push-ups, uh, sit-ups, and then and then and some some planking, and that that's enough for for you to actually get into the zone for the day. And I think uh, 
all of these like morning miracles and morning routines are also very important but you need to to really understand what you need because I always read a lot of a lot of uh, articles and interviews with successful people and I'm like holy shit he's doing this I should start doing this and then after a month I see that it's not really for me it probably works for his lifestyle but it doesn't really work for me so I'm currently sticking to probably 10 habits in, in the morning and then uh, then throughout the day I have some other habits that like mostly are for productivity. For example, probably my most, uh, my, my, my favorite one is, uh, sorry, my favorite one is probably if I have, I, I make a lot of introductions these days, so someone is, is, is uh, like just texting me and like, oh, I so saw you, you know this guy on Twitter, could you introduce me? Because of course, like through introductions, it's much better uh, success rate that you're gonna get connected or like gonna get a favor or whatever. So I'm like, yeah, sure, and I'm gonna put it on to-do list, and I'm not gonna do it even though it takes like five minutes or, or, or two minutes. So what I like to do is the two-minute rule. If the task doesn't take more than two minutes, I'm gonna do it instantly. So this works very well with the washing dishes. So before I was just piling up a lot of stuff and then a lot of these flies and smell and like, someone comes in and like, oh, let's go to, to a restaurant or something. So, so now I'm doing just like, okay, I ate and now I'm, I'm just going to wash my, my dishes because it takes less than two minutes. The same with these introductions. And I'm, instead of putting, and sometimes I catch myself because I forget, I'm putting that introduction thing on my to-do list, which is less than 30 minutes for the, for the third task. But then I'm like, maybe I should just do it now and then forget it at all. So I would just make the introduction in, in these two, three minutes, four minutes, whatever. And then uh, it really works well because you are actually clearing up your, your mental space and I think it's, it's probably the, the most favorite uh, uh, productivity hack that I have. But uh, that's probably about it for my uh, introduction and I would like to start answering these questions then. This one, this one is interesting. I'd like him to talk about the context, it's in quotes, I don't know if it's actually a thing, context switching penalty, how much time we waste use when we switch between different types of job, jobs tasks in the day. Well, I cannot really like answer this, but I read that it takes on average 23 minutes, and of course it's like again, maybe for, for you, for, for, for Ignis or for myself, it takes 30 minutes, for someone it takes 5 minutes to come back to the same idea or like to the same uh, work phase that you've been into, but uh, it takes around 23 minutes for you to switch from Facebook back to creative work or like from writing a blog post back to analytical work. So what I like to do is to batch things and uh, it sounds very well in theory but it doesn't really work for me, but for example one day when I was uh, actively podcasting I would try to batch all of the interviews within one day instead of like having one podcast tomorrow, one podcast on, on Saturday, on, on Sunday, on Monday and so on. So I would try to batch four or five podcasts in the same day. So I'm already in the mental state that I need to interview people today. And then, you know, I have an interview for 30 minutes, I rest for 20 minutes, then I have another interview, then I have another interview. And all of these tasks are very similar, so I don't need to think about like, high level planning instead of just like asking and talking to people, listening to them and then, that, then that's it. So I think uh, batching similar work for yourself is very important and what works very well is actually writing it on paper because as you write on paper your, your brain registers it as, as a complete task because if you're just typing it into a into computer uh, your brain is tricked that you're kind of working but you're not finishing it. So when you're writing it on paper and then you're actually put it into physical world and for, for some reason we, we like physical world more, more than imagined one. So that works as well and uh, switching penalty. I wouldn't say that there's like a penalty but you are just not aware that you are still thinking about the previous task. So when I was in Thailand I attended this 10 day uh, meditation retreat, silence retreat. And what I learned about meditation is that, well, it's, it's just like awareness. Just understanding where you are now, what you're thinking about, what you're feeling, and that's it. There's nothing, no woo-woo's, nothing, nothing, no religion. And uh, this context switching penalty is, 
it's just that you're becoming more more unconscious in your work or like whatever you're doing. So that's uh, probably the, the only penalty. And uh, the more trained to be aware, to be present you are, I think the, that that time reduces instead of you know thinking about previous tasks for 20 minutes, you you can switch in a couple of minutes and be very present. So that helps with uh, very simple mindfulness uh, practice, which is just saying, okay, I'm, I'm now writing, writing, writing. And then you're going to catch yourself, okay, what I was thinking before, I was just reminding these words. So for example, I was very much all the time forgetting if I locked the door, and then <laughs> I would go down the stairs, and then I, shit, I don't know if I locked the door. So I'll go back. So this is the perfect example of how unaware you are of the things you're doing on autopilot, which is habit. So you have a habit already to just lock the door. And the same is with, uh, with all of the other aware of hunger. And then these habits, they're seeking for instant rewards. So I would say with the, with the work, just, just become more mindful. And if you feel, okay, I want to open Facebook. So you think about like, why I want to open Facebook. And what meditation gave to me was just that little split second, that little buffer to just let me think about like, why am I bored and why, I'm, why do I want to open Facebook? So if I meditate more, I have longer time to think about that I'm actually bored. And I would catch myself, oh, I'm just, probably I just don't want to write this longer sentence because it's more, it's more complex than I thought. But then I push, uh, push through and I say, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored. And then <laughs> I just push and now I, I'm, tr I'm trying to, to challenge myself and go through that resistance. So I would say, um, start meditating. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, okay, there is another question. What does he think about six hour workday policy? This is a good one. I think, <laughs> of course, like people don't like work. We, we are lazy species, and and uh, but if you're thinking about productivity, and especially, I don't have any like bosses. I can just like live whatever and uh, find a job after three months, four months. I, I, I do my job whenever I, I I want to. But the thing is that this freedom also uh, works against me because then I'm like. Uh, today I don't feel like working, I'm going to the beach. So, so it happened a lot of times and I think a uh, six day hour workday policy it's, it's, it's completely fine if, if, if it fits with your lifestyle and you can do a lot of work in six hours. But for me I have like, you know, like in sports we have seasons and off seasons, like playoffs and se off seasons. So for me it's the same. I would uh, work very hard for six months, I would release a book, uh, make a lot of connections, write a lot, a lot of articles, uh, release a course, and be very socializing and so on. But then I would just go to off-season and I would do nothing. I would just be you know, reading books, working on myself, and working two, three hours a day, instead of working like eight to nine hours. So I think it's completely fine if you get shit done in these six hours. But uh, again, it's like, usually it doesn't really depend on yourself. But uh, if six hours is fine, I don't really see any problems probably even five hours or four hours is fine. <laughs> uh, how food and sports influence productivity? This is a good one. So for when I started like developing these habits, I was looking more into diets and I can tell you one thing, diets don't work. The only thing that works is your attitude and your lifestyle change. So I'm okay eating healthy for the rest of my life and eating some junk food once in a while, it's completely fine with me. So I wouldn't call it a diet, but at the same time, I limited uh, the junk food or like a lot of carbs that, for example, I really like bread, bread uh, products like croissants and stuff, with coffee in the morning, it's amazing. But the thing is that all of this gluten and all of the carbs, they actually block your brain because you need to start digesting, uh, digesting all the food. So your, brain, your, your blood goes to, to your stomach and then it's very hard to think and you feel, feel very lazy like for the, for the first couple of hours in, in your morning. So I would say that it influences a lot of food, especially sugar. So sugar, for example, uh, when I was reading a book about, about willpower, it's the, it's the quickest way to get energy for you. So for example, if you, you, you probably remember these, these times when you feel very tired or like you're very nervous or like very angry. And then you, very, uh, you crave sugar a lot. So that's the thing that 
mentally we know how to get energy quickly. So that can be sugar, like chocolate or candies or whatever. But the second thing is, is just carbs and like of course like the, the fast uh, the fast digested uh, carbs that give you provide you sugar. So uh, last year when I was running half marathon, I never understood why these people are eating in the middle of running. Like I'm gonna feel sick or like I'm gonna I'm gonna throw up. But the thing is that they are not eating steak or well, like burger or, or something. So, so when I when I started digging into it, into it, because my first half marathon was completely miserable failure, and I almost died for the last two kilometers. I was black out and like it was horrible. So last year I was like, I'm gonna do some research and I'm gonna see like why do these people eat. So when I started running more than 15 kilometers. I noticed that at 12, 13 kilometer, I started to feel that my muscles started to, 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 to be very sore. So the thing is that the, the, the sugar in your blood is all used for the, for the running energy, to produce the, the energy. And then uh, your body starts eating your muscle or, 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 or all the other ingredients in your body. Ingredients? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, you, know, you got it. <laughs> so, so once the, there's no sugar, I'm like, okay, what, what should I take? There's Snickers. Probably I should take Snickers. Snickers. There is a lot of sugar. So I was running uh, by the river from Antakalnis to was the Bing 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 Park something. So I was just going there, and at 11th or 12th kilometer, I'm just gonna take slowly that Snickers, and I, and I feel so weird. Like I'm running, and I like slowly. <laughs> taking that Snickers and then eating bit by bit because I didn't want to eat half of it because then I probably my, my blood all would go to my uh, stomach to digest all of that sugar but then after after two or three kilometers I would eat a little bit more a little bit more and then I finished uh, finished the, the bar completely and then after after running for 18 or I don't know 19 kilometers that day I didn't feel that muscle soreness so then I'm like Ah, uh, probably that's why. And then I googled, and of course, like you need sugar when you're running. So they have these special running uh, sugar glucose uh, gels or whatever. So when I signed up for the half marathon, they gave it to me, and I'm like, oh, probably this is what they what they are eating. It's not that fancy toothpaste NASA food or something. So th this was uh, the the sugar sweet, pretty much like sweet sugar. And then uh, once you're running, they they also have all of these like fruits or uh, very sweet uh, sweet like drinks for for uh, for replenishing your your body so I was drinking these of course uh, as well because the first time I ran I'm like I ain't got time for this I, I just want to finish so I'm like just running 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 I don't care about all these fruits and all of that uh, drinks so that's the thing as well with uh, with your simple like diets whatever you whatever whatever your habits are you have these habits and you have your personal diet you, you have preference you know for broccoli or for tomato or for steak or for chicken but the thing is that if you skip probably six or six is too much, probably two or three hours without food, you start creating sugar or energy so much that you're just gonna you know make a very unconscious decision and you're gonna grab the thing that digests fastest and turns food into that that uh, that product into sugar. So usually that's like oh, I'm just gonna get you know a couple of I don't know how do you call them Dallas in English. <laughs> Some, some, some bread and uh, I would say that's the, that's the thing that your willpower is powered by sugar and of course there are many different research uh, saying that your, your mental goals or like your vision for life is much stronger uh, motivator for, for making your decisions but we are very simple physical beings and we just need sugar to make these decisions so instead of getting that sugar just uh, you just need to start eating uh, regularly and getting more protein because protein is, is not digested like instantly turned into sugar so it takes uh, some time and at least for me uh, eating high protein food uh, gives gives hunger in like an, an hour or two so I need to eat like six seven sometimes eight times a day but that's completely fine because then I don't feel too heavy and I can still keep working because uh, before I was having, uh, when, I, when I used to live in Lithuania, I was having very fat Lithuanian lunch with a lot of potatoes and a lot of fat sausages and stuff. And then I would hate myself for the next two, three hours after food and I'm like, oh, I don't want to do anything, I just want to lay in my bed and watch the TV. 
So that's probably affecting your productivity a lot, but that's again, it works for me <coughs> reducing carbs and just eating more frequently in the day, but it might not work for you. So I think it's, it's just like uh, monitoring yourself and being again like aware, how do you feel after like having a cup of coffee with, uh, with the chocolate or how do you feel having uh, some fruits or vegetables or, or salad? How this is the next question? How he concentrates concentrates if he has a deadline and head is empty. This is always uh, a case, I think. <laughs> but but I, I see that people are actually I think it's called Parkinson's law. If, if I'm wrong, please correct me. I think it's called Parkinson's law, which means that no matter what deadline you set, you're always gonna complete the work because then your brain forces you to focus on essentials and cut all the bullshit. So I would say that if I have a deadline, I usually perform much better than if I write for myself. So most of my deadlines are just working with clients and like providing some, uh, some written content. And uh, for work with Forbes, I have a simple contract, five posts uh, a month. And uh, last two months I was finishing most of the posts in the last two days. So I was very productive in the last two days, but if you see how productive I was in the whole month, I was completely not productive because I didn't really have that headline close to me. So I think if I have a, head, a deadline, I usually, I'm usually pretty confident that I'm gonna finish it because it's, it's something that I've done before and I don't really stress about it. I usually just uh, dump the first or second draft in, in a couple of hours and then I work on editing and then uh, just like revising it and then, then I'm gonna leave uh, it for, for a couple of hours to just digest and then I'm gonna come back, uh, see it uh, with fresh eyes and then I'm gonna send it to, to the client. So another thing with, uh, with producing things uh, when you have a deadline and there's nothing in your head, I think again like if you're producing content in my case every single day or at least five days a week you're already in the in the habit of, of producing it, so you don't really need to stretch to the deadline because you just pick uh, a very realistic date for yourself and if you are following your morning routine, so mostly I write in my morning routine, but sometimes it can be just like, oh, I'm just gonna write how I felt yesterday, I'm gonna write uh, what I wanna do in the next 10 days, uh, 10, 10 years of my life, I'm gonna write something for, for my blog or something for my clients, but then throughout the day I actually need to finish it and so on. So I already have that habit of writing it and I don't push too much pressure, I don't put too much pressure on myself throughout the day because I already did some bit of, of that, uh, that kind of work. Okay. The rituals and habits work in the long run and how to avoid the yo-yo effect like weight loss. Yeah, so with, the, with habits, they're, they're, of course, like you read a lot of articles as well, all these clickbait, uh, uh, headlines saying that it takes only two weeks to uh, adopt a new habit or it takes 30 days to get into shape or whatever. So all of this is bullshit again, but this is probably they're taking the average. So for myself, uh, waking up early, I was increasingly going down, probably decreasing, <laughs> decreasing the, the time that I was waking up. So I, was, uh, I started with 7 o'clock, then 6.30, then in a week I would switch to 6, in a week uh, I would switch to 5.30, and then after a week I would switch to 5. So that didn't really hurt myself, and I was so pretty... Did you change the time when you went to sleep? Went yeah, to sleep? yeah, <laughs> that's also a point, yeah. So before, I don't know, my very good or like productive peak time was from 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. So I was still in high school, and like uh, I went to, to academy in Denmark, and I was so productive after all of the all of the people were, were sleeping and there's dark around and I don't really want to go to Facebook or check anything because I know that everyone is sleeping. So then at that time I was very productive but the more I started reading about health and habits and how these successful people uh, are actually waking up early and they're becoming these early birds, I decided maybe I should give it a shot and then there, were, there was a very simple article on Medium where a guy was saying, oh, I wake up 4.30 every day and then I finish work at 2, 2 p.m. PM and I can see all the sunsets, I can go uh, just, you know, exercise on the beach and so on and so on. I'm like, yeah, that sounds pretty good. So I started 
waking up early, but of course you need to go to, to bed early. So probably the first day is the hardest because, of course, if you are going to bed at 12 and today you're going to try to go to bed at 10, you're not going to sleep. But if you wake up tomorrow at 5, you're going to hate yourself first thing, but the second thing, at 10 o'clock you're going to be very tired tomorrow. So without, you know, if you, take, if you don't take too many naps throughout the day, then you're going to sleep like a, like a baby the next day, 10 p.m. And then slowly, you know, you, you're going to go through, through that uh, hell, probably, of waking up early. But then it, it's going to start to be more natural for yourself. So, for example, before I was waking up with, uh, with the phone and uh, changing time zones, it takes some time to adjust. But usually I would wake up like one or two minutes before five. I'm like, oh, probably it's, it's still like a couple of hours to sleep. I'm just going to put my head and uh, hear my alarm. But now I have the, the Fitbit and it just like starts vibrating. So before I was using, you know, the iPhone has this like super military uh, alarm, <laughs> and, and I and I usually had it on like full, kind of like you know full volume. So if I sleep with, with other people in, in the same in the same room, they're like, "What the fuck is happening?" Five o'clock. It's like completely dark, and they're like get, getting stressed. Some people are just like completely dead. They don't hear if you know there's a war outside. But some people are like, why? Why would you do that? So right now it's it's very uh, other people friendly that I can wake up at my time and I can do my things at five at five o'clock. So usually I, I go to bed at uh, nine thirty. More sometimes usually like yeah nine thirty to ten. So it's seven seven thirty uh, hours of sleep every day for me, and for me it's fine. But recently I started to get 8 hours of sleep to see how I actually perform with more sleep. So, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the thing about rituals in the long run. Probably a little, a little bit irrelevant answer. <laughs> the, the problem of, of burnouts, how to avoid it, how to deal with it, how often he has that problem. Probably I know some things and there are some simple solutions, but it's interesting to hear more from experts about it. I'm <laughs> the first thing, I'm not an expert, but with, uh, with burnouts, I, I actually burned out pretty seriously, probably three or four times in the last five years. I used to have this attitude that I'm, I'm Superman, I can do whatever. So I would become, you know, I would start writing, blogging, designing, I would start uh, building startups and then I would start going to different conferences and talking about this thing and then uh, connecting with other people and then mentoring people and then con connecting uh, with people who would put me as a designer on their startup. So at one thing I was just juggling too many balls and of course you're going to burn out because it's not, uh, as I was talking with, with Paul, is that it's not really like work-life balance uh, friendly. So with burnouts, I have complete freedom to, to design my lifestyle and design my, my week. So I usually try to take weekends off and uh, it's pretty hard because I don't really have much of interest out of what I'm doing every day because most of my work is very interest like hobby, uh, hobby related. So if I'm abroad, I would just go to the beach, I would try to, to connect with some other people. So for example, if I have all of these uh, people asking me, oh, we should catch up, you're in Vilnius, let's, let's grab a coffee or, or, or some, uh, some lunch or something, I usually put it for the weekend. So this is like for me good because I actually meet the people. It's, it's also good batching them. So after meeting one person, I'm going to meet another one, another one, and even like uh, connecting them is, is even better because then they, they get to know each other and then I don't need to go to two different meetings, which is also good. <laughs> And and on the week I would start uh, I would try to do all of the all of the work and then on the on the weekends I start not to work. Before I was trying to do uh, Sunday completely plugged off plugged off plugged off whatever disconnected <laughs> disconnected and uh, the thing was that I would uh, shut down my phone shut down my, uh, my, my laptop and then I would try to survive without you know, electronics and it's pretty hard if you, if you think about it or if you tried it. And other thing what I try, started to do recently is fasting. So I would eat a lot of junk food on Friday night and Saturday. So throughout the week I eat very healthy and have these uh, healthy foods and whatever. 
and then on, on the weekend I would get Lithuanian food, burgers and a lot of fats, sometimes even beer, a lot of candies, cakes and then on Sunday I hate myself so much that I ruined all of my work uh, throughout the week that I decided, well I was inspired by a friend who was doing uh, fasting so for the, for the 24 hours I wouldn't eat anything except water and for me as who, who eats at least like seven eight times a day I felt like how is this even possible to survive like half of the day without food and then on Monday I need to go to exercise in the morning so I thought like I'm gonna die if, I, if I'm not gonna die on Sunday I'm gonna die on, on Monday morning <laughs> so, so the first the first day I was uh, I was testing this theory I was flying from Bali to, to Thailand I think so the hardest point is probably at 11 o'clock when you start hearing, I don't even know how to <laughs> explain these things that like dinosaurs or dragons, like these crazy sounds, and you start feeling that there is something moving in one's foot probably, and, and then I'm like, holy shit, there's nothing on the plane, of course. So I have just water and I'm just drinking, 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 and at the same time I was just reading a book on my phone, and uh, I just switched more focus to, to just reading more, instead of like, uh, of course I whined a lot and like said, oh this is bullshit because my, my friend was sitting next to me like how can you do this, this is completely against humanity and shit and blah 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 and then, and then after like 30 minutes I completely forgot about it and the most benefits I felt probably after 20 hours when you don't, don't want to eat at all and you feel very good, very light and you, your, your, your thinking becomes very clear and uh, after that experience the next day well, actually, that, that the same evening I was eating because I started on Saturday evening, so I finished after 24 hours on Sunday evening. And the next morning when I went to the gym, of course, I had some food, but I didn't feel very weak or something, so, so I'm doing this, and I have done it twice already in Lithuania here. And the thing is that every single thing that you taste after these 24 hours is amazing. Like, you just get, like, fried egg with nothing. It's just, like, so good. You just, <laughs> The war at every single piece of it. So I think that's uh, the benefit of just like rediscovering things that uh, that you you take for granted every day. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is the the thing for for burnouts. So I try on <coughs> weekends to, to just disconnect from my work, and uh, it's pretty hard because if you have unfinished email or you're pitching a client here, you're still thinking about it. So meditation helps me a little bit to reduce that anxiety and just like be more present but uh, at the same time just like fasting or, or going on the beach or meeting with friends and like if I speak to you I cannot think too much about work because if I'm engaged uh, to, to our conversation then, then it's very hard to think about all these worries. So, so this is how I try to avoid burnout and uh, it's very hard but I think doing prevention instead of you know trying to quickly fix it after you are burned, burned out, I think it's, it's a much better decision. Where is he more productive in Lithuania or Southeast Asia? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is with uh, with uh, why I was doing this all, all this morning routines because if I follow my morning routine, it doesn't really matter where I am. So if I exercise, if I if I eat healthy, and if I go to go to bed and I meditate, I'm pretty tired after after you know days of work. And it doesn't matter where I am in the U.S. or Asia or in Lithuania. I'm, I just want to go to sleep after after the day. And uh, if I don't follow the routine, which happens if I'm if I'm traveling for just like. A week or, or I'm seeing my friends or if I go to my parents house that house just has something that I was probably you know growing up for for the first 20 years of my life and you just like fall back to all these old habits and I'm just gonna lay in my bed eat a lot of shit and of course fridge is next to me and I'm gonna go and get a lot of food from there and I think I'm more productive when I'm traveling instead of being here because for me Lithuania now is just like Kind of vacation place so I come back here for the summer and I'm gonna see a lot of friends and there are a lot of internet friends that I sometimes meet and I'm like, oh shit you're real 
<laughs> even though I knew you for two years on Facebook and you never met, but I'm, I'm meeting all these people, so I'm not that productive here, and, and I'm actually not beating myself up because of that, because it's probably, again, my kind of off-season, because before uh, it comes this pre-program thinking that summer is holidays, and it comes from school and from, like, our society that, of course, like, summer is the best time to take vacation for one month, two months, whatever, and when I come back here, I kind of have this other you know, underlining thinking that this is kind of vacation, summertime. I'm not really beating myself too much because I'm not writing too much or even like with these habits, I'm not following them like every day. There are like chains that I break every, every uh, like couple of weeks or a couple of days. So I would wake up one day at five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock. But the, the thing is that I'm always trying to come back to all of that routine. And I see that if I follow it, my day is much, much better than all, all the other days that I wake up at uh, 7 or, or 8 o'clock. So, yeah, probably I'm just more, tra more productive when, when traveling. And uh, another thing about, like, uh, yesterday I met a guy in, in coffee and, and he said, how can you work in coffee shops? This is so noisy. And that, that coffee shop is, is pretty noisy in, uh, in uh, Vilnius Gatve, uh, coffee. Inn. It's mm -hmm. just like loud music, people like, they're coming in and they have a meeting and they're shouting and stuff and I have my uh, my headphones and sometimes you're aware of these sounds but sometimes if you're very into your work I don't really like hear anything and uh, for me I get very bored if I work from home or like the same coffee shop for a week so I need to change the environment and then I have most of my ideas when I'm walking or when I'm reading or on a bus so at, at least for me it helps to really just uh, spark that uh, creativity inspiration thing that uh, that doesn't give me being in, in, in one place so probably when traveling I'm more more productive and more creative than, than just being here in Lithuania. How do you prioritize which tasks to tackle first and which last? This is very, probably not very similar, I'm, I'm very good with uh, comparing things but a lot of people ask me how do you find your purpose or like your passion in life or like that, that you know, the, uh, why you are even existing. So recently my, my mission is to inspire or to help one million people to change their lifestyle for good. So either it's like courses, products or books or whatever I'm doing to help them see the benefits of redesigning their own lifestyle and living the life they want. And the thing is that it's a lot about not doing what others are doing. So I'm not looking at others and okay, oh he's starting a business. I want to I want to be a business and businessman and I'm gonna become a businessman. So this is again probably awareness and the more you are you are aware and meditate, the more you understand yourself that okay you have this uh, skill or or this uh, background and you are fit for for being a you know a musician or something. But instead you are seeing all of these media. Uh, media stories pushing that, oh, these startup founders, they're just 21, they're having private jets, Snapchat uh, founders and so on, <laughs> just to mention. And uh, you're thinking like, I'm a piece of shit, I'm, I'm like doing nothing. So, so for me it was, actually this is how I started doing too many things and I was burning out and I was committing to too many things, you know, co-founding two startups and founding myself and then starting a blog, selling it, starting another one, starting a book. So these were because I was convinced by all of these people and articles and success stories that, well, anyone can do it, just, you know, you need probably 60 hours a day. But, but I was convinced of that and I think it's again like being very aware what do you want to do and about your passion, it's, it's not about that you need to find it, you just need to, to create one uh, purpose that you want to seek and you're very excited about it. So for me, one million... Uh, to help one million people to change their lifestyle. Nobody, you know, came to me and like, mom called me and like, you know, Thomas, you should probably from today start influencing one million people and start, you know, uh, writing books or, or uh, pushing uh, courses or something to help them change their lifestyle because this is your path. And I'm like, oh, thank you, mom. So this <laughs> doesn't actually never happen, but it's not going to happen. And, and I think it's bullshit to find, uh, find your purpose or wait for it until it, it strikes you. So I think he's just deciding to, to do one thing and then completely 
committing to it and living it uh, every day. So for me, my, my life mission changed in the last five years, probably 15 times. And this current mission is probably going to change because I, I don't have any counter saying that, okay, maybe I helped two people already out of a million. So I need to create kind of counter that people can push or click for something. <laughs> and then I'm going to hire a couple of hundred Indians to just click that they, <laughs> they got help from me. And then I reach that million. But, but maybe I'm going to change my, my life purpose in, uh, in, in a week or in a month or in, in a couple of years. So the same with uh, prioritizing these tasks. Uh, there are a couple of theories. I think uh, one of the theory has three things, or no, four things. So, so we have four plates. I'm very bad with com com comparing things, comparisons, but four plates, right? And one plate is, or it may be balls. Like let's say it's juggling balls. It's better. So you, you juggle four four balls, and uh, one ball is your family. The other one is your sleep and health. The other one is your Balls. And if you focus on on just one ball, of course, like all the other balls are gonna, are gonna fall down and you're gonna fail. So it's all about like finding that right balance. And for me, before I was so much into just like achieving my goals and doing, uh, you know, pushing a project or creating a blog, creating a business, that um, I feel I'm kind of separated from my friends or close friends and my family so now I have on my on my to-do list every month to call my mom because I was just like oh mom I'm good that's it for, for, for the next three months we wouldn't speak at all so that's that's a very bad thing and I feel that uh, throughout the years the the impact is getting bigger so I'm trying to focus on all these four balls and it's the same with how do you prioritize all of these tasks what to do first so of course if you have a deadline, you have urgent thing, you focus on something that is burning because you don't want this thing to make more damage. So if you have fire in this building, of course we're not going to think which iPhone should I buy next. So you focus first on what is burning and what needs to be done right now. Other thing is of course what is, I think it's called Eisenhower matrix where you focus on important but not urgent. So of course this is your health. This is the, probably this is the most important thing in your life. You need to focus on. That's why like morning routines are so important because oh I need to take care of my family. I need to take care of my job. Who's gonna pay bills? But if if you become completely not moving and whining, human little being in your bed and someone needs to take care of you, I think this is not going to help you to make money to take care of your family or be creative or do impact in the world. So I think first you need to think what is contributing to your long-term goals, so like long-term uh, uh, impact in your life. So of course this is this is your uh, this is your health and your like personal projects or something or your finances. And then there are of course these things that you can delegate to our goals. So this is the delegation thing, but of course like uh, delegation in the company, of course it comes if there is a person, even though if if, if it's not his or her. Uh, job to do it, but if he's more qualified or, or he, he, he's going to do it in two minutes instead of me doing it for two hours, then it's a good idea to delegate it for the, for the, for the shared vision, of course, and shared like productivity. And the third thing, uh, fourth thing is, of course, deleting things. So a lot of things you just need to get rid of. And I really like Warren Buffett's uh, list of 25 items. So you write down, and it works with any, anything you want to do. So, for example, you want to uh, write down things you want to achieve in life from 1 to 25 and it, it looks like it's pretty easy, but after 5 it's get, it gets pretty hard. So, you write down 25 things and then you write uh, numbers from 1 to 25 to each item. And, of course, it can be very unorganized. So, then you rewrite the same list, uh, ordered list 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, until 25. And after number 5, you just draw a very thick, fat red line and these first five things are the only things you need to focus and you can actually possibly achieve in your life and other 20 things below that line are avoid at all costs uh, list. So if there is, you know, become a musician, uh, uh, write a book, uh, build another Snapchat, uh, drive Ferrari and build a house and then the sixth one is actually uh, become a, a pilot for Emirates or something. You're not gonna become a pilot for Emirates. It's well, it's not actually guaranteed that you're gonna become 
first five things, but after number five, you need to avoid at all costs. And sometimes it's very, very, very heartbreaking because you actually need to kill your ideas and kill your kill your dreams. But it works the same with with every single thing uh, for in your life. So if like 50, 60 emails to reply, and some of them are two minutes, so I can do it instantly. But some of them they need some research or they need. Uh, uh, some thinking or something, and I try to delegate as much emails to my future, my to, to future myself instead of doing them uh, right in the moment. And I think if you focus most on, on your emails in the day, you're just working for someone else's to do list because you have your own to do list which has the most important task, and then some other. And then these emails, these emails, they they just be, start forcing you to do other people's job. Um, does he meditate? Sort of. I don't know what that means, but okay. Imagine, imagining really how he will do things, how that helps in practice. Um, yeah, so probably I, ju I just uh, responded to that question, but for me, meditation didn't really come naturally. Um, I'm not very, very religious, and I thought this is some kind of boo boo thing, and and I kind of had a fear. I'm from a very little village in Lithuania, and when I came to Vilnius and I see these people with white dresses and something, and they're shouting Krishna or something, I felt like, what is this like? <laughs> Why do these people do this? Because in, in my village we had 300 people, and of course, you know, there are three drunk people, there are a couple of like old grandmas who are screaming at their cats all the time, but that's completely normal. It's like our village, we know what's going on. But when I came to Venice, I saw these people doing these things, and like sometimes these like hip hoppers, street dancers would start dancing in the street. I'm like, oh, no, this is not normal. <laughs> so, so for me, meditation was the same thing. Like, this is not normal. This is like one of these like sect of things, and I'm like, I'm not doing this at all, never. So, <coughs> with meditation, I was very resistant uh, to start and to even like read more about it to understand what it is. But then I started reading more about like. Uh, these influential people and, and superstar athletes, how they actually reached at the top by meditating and just being calm with, uh, with their mind. So then I started uh, using an uh, using, uh, application called Headspace, and it's, it's very simple. I recommend it to everyone uh, everywhere I go. And there's another one, it's called Calm, and uh, other one, Meditation Studio. I'm planning to release a meditation app as well. so. Gonna show that as well, <laughs> but anyway, I started started meditating and it was uh, it was kind of okay. I didn't see any benefits, but I, I just believed that it's gonna you know click at one point. Of course, it never clicks, but in the long term, I started to feel more relaxed and more in the moment. So even if I have a, a flight to catch in the next 60 minutes, which happened in in Bangkok, and I'm still stuck in in a traffic, there's nothing I can do in that moment. And then I started to see that I'm more aware of that anger that I want to release on the driver. I want to scream on him like, can you please drive a little faster? And then the story happens that he actually told me in Thai probably that he doesn't have enough gas. So we stopped in the gas station and I'm like, this is the best thing, thank you. And then he's like, I see a line of 20 cars. It's probably like some taxi gas station or whatever. And he's like, don't worry, don't worry, five minutes, five minutes, okay, five minutes. We're sitting for 15 minutes and I'm like, just, you know, sitting, <sighs> breathing, I, I cannot do anything. And then he comes to me, I, 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 I wanted to tell him, like, there was like five minutes more and, and he says, no, it's okay, five, five more minutes, it's, it's going to be fine. I'm like, okay, okay, it's fine. And then he tell, shows me, points to my, to my watch and he's like, I'm like, you mean when I'm, my, my flight is taking off? Yes, yes, sir. I'm like, in 45 minutes, I, I tell him, he, he's like, okay, airport, 30 minutes, all good, okay. <laughs> so so he, he, he was probably more relaxed than I was. And, uh, and, uh, but meditation helped me to, to deal with these things because before I would start screaming on him or I would say like, why the fuck you didn't explain that you're stopping at the gas station? Like, I was just, I'm just gonna grab another taxi. But, uh, I was like, what's the worst that can happen? I'm gonna miss a flight, I'm just gonna catch another one. That's, that's, that's completely fine. So meditation helped me to, to track my own emotions and that when I was closed, 
in, in, in the temple in, in northern Thailand in the mountains for 10 days without being able to speak. Well, I was able to speak, but I was not allowed. And uh, then the monk was every morning, he was giving like these Buddha teachings. And uh, of course, like, um, this is going to be some kind of sect. At the, at, the, at the beginning, they said this is going to be meditation retreat. That of course, they're going to say that this is the religion you need to go to, and so on. <laughs> so I'm like, holy shit, this is going to be very intense. But surprisingly, he was talking a lot about like neuro. Uh, scientific research. He was talking about Einstein uh, time uh, uh, time theory. Then he was talking about Mark Zuckerberg, and I'm like, holy shit, this is very interesting. And a lot of these things started to make sense. So even like Buddha, which which many people think like this is this is a thing, woo woo thing, but Buddha just means Buddha can be anyone in in this room. It means awakened. So the whole Buddhism and Buddha thing is just being awakened and being present. And of course, like people like to to make these things into something that they are not. So they have all of these like chantings, they have all of these clothes, they have all of these uh, uh, rituals, and so on, and so on. But Buddhism or meditation is simply just being here and now and being aware of what you feel. So what I learned that every day you feel three hundred thousand emotions, and you think of sixty thousand different stories or like memories every day. And when you need to actually list them down, probably you can list 10, 15, maybe if you're aware, aware, 20 of them. So when I was meditating in that temple, I started to see how I feel. And I would see, okay, I see there is a pigeon shitting on something. And I'm like, holy shit, this makes me so angry. I want to leave this stupid place. Because this is become more aware and understand, okay, right now I want to write. But is this really why, why I want to write? Maybe I just want to answer someone's question or I want to call my mom and I'm going to just spill all my ideas into blog posts instead of doing the thing. So this is why I started talking about meditation, but it's just about bringing awareness. And uh, again, like meditation is such a woo-woo thing, but I like the word just focusing on your breath and that's it. So this is the basic of meditation and just uh, grounding yourself to, to where you are in present. And uh, currently I'm reading a very good book, I can recommend you The Power of Now. So all of these things that uh, even now probably you're thinking like, oh, I have a cold feet, well, at least I have, I'm, I'm lazy, or I don't want to work after the speech, or I want to go home, or what I'm going to do tomorrow, or the next weekend I have a festival, I'm very interested in who I'm going to meet there. And then you're thinking about different things, but once you start practicing more mindfulness, it helps you with general uh, productivity in work or like personal life, and uh, I think it just uh, helps you to, to, to become more present. Present, present, present. Uh, yeah, so that's about meditation, and yes, I do meditate. That's that's a short. <laughs> uh, what's the relationship between goals and productivity? How does liking your job influence productivity? Is productivity the new really okay? So these are probably three questions. What's the relationship between goals and productivity? I think there is some relationship. There should be <laughs> not like husband and wife, but something. I think if you set goals that are not really yours, then you're gonna get uh, disconnected from them, and you're not gonna be motivated to actually push through when you're challenged. So, I would like to say there is an easy test for it, but probably it's not. But uh, at least for me, when I, when I think of something, for example, right now my main focus for the next two years is writing a bestseller book about habits of success. And that's the only thing I want to do. I was preparing for it for the last two years. I want to do it now. And uh, the more work I put in, and of course there are challenges, but every morning I wake up and I'm maybe so it's, it's not such a big like Kaunas in Lithuania. But for me, it was the big city. I'm like, holy shit, this is the time that I'm becoming man. And of course, like, <laughs> of course, like, nothing happened, like, completely nothing. Because I was always living in that future, in that projected future that actually never happens. And you cannot cope with all of that future thing because they are just in your head. So after living in Denmark, I see, like, nah, Denmark is probably not for me. It's just language, weather. <laughs> I need to go to London, it's probably the best city in Europe, the biggest, a lot of money. Yeah, I'm gonna find my success there. 
and well, okay, I'm, I'm moving to, to London, and of course, after a week, is this everything? Like, there's nothing more, and of course, there's nothing more, and I'm like, holy shit, I, I did it again. So, so for me, it took a while to realize that it doesn't matter where you are, even here in Lithuania or Village or London, Los Angeles, Asia, it doesn't really matter where you are for, for your goals or productivity to, to increase or decrease. I think it's all your, in your mindset and for me at least I feel like home everywhere I go. So for me it takes 2-3 days to adapt to a new place and I live just with this backpack. So I, I took out my uh, dirty laundry so it doesn't stink here but, <laughs> but basically this is all of my stuff that I have. So for me I check in into hotel two, three days and I'm like walking in the evening and you know, I'm already familiar with my neighborhood and I'm like feeling like home and I can sleep like a baby in that bed. So for me, that mind shift happened probably, I was completely disappointed with Denmark, London and other countries and probably the whole world that no matter where I went, nobody cared and like I didn't become a man uh, in being in the US or Asia. And uh, I think it's very important to set goals that are very close to you and you're going to do it no matter what. I think it's, it's very funny with the, I don't know if we have any vegans, but, but the same with marathon runners. So I'm not sure how many of you would be meet vegans or run a marathon if it was not allowed to brag about it, like you're not allowed to tell anyone. <laughs> Probably I wouldn't run a half marathon. <laughs> But, but that's the thing that uh, we do a lot of things that, that are just to please external, uh, external factors like our society, our, our friends and uh, well you, all of you have been traveling a lot and you probably can notice how, how much you change by just uh, you know, leaving your country for a week and you come back and you're like wow nothing changed completely like nobody missed me and like <laughs> I, I, I felt and, and saw and, and thought about so much and, uh, and I come back here and nothing changed. So, so I think once you travel and you, you start seeing that being here or being there, you're not really important to anyone and you need to be very focused on your own uh, health and your own uh, you know, being and being aware what makes you happy. So at the same time, with, in the book he's addressing uh, the power of now, he's addressing the question of Okay, so what I'm gonna do if I want to be present, present, if I'm like you know doing a very shitty job, uh, or I'm like you know someone is trying to to bury me or something, what do I do? So there are three options. The first one is do what you can. So instead of thinking what you could do or thinking what uh, could you be doing before that, instead of that happening, uh, you think okay, what I'm gonna do now and act instantly. So for example, I have uh, I have. I don't know, I have pain in my knee. So one of the things is, ah, oh, I'm such an idiot, probably I shouldn't have gone playing football with these assholes who hit me. So this is a regret, you shouldn't do that. The next thing is, oh, probably it's gonna be some, some kind of cancer, I'm gonna die. And then, <laughs> and then you start worrying it and you're building all, all that anxiety in your body which gives you even, even more negative emotions and you, you, you actually make yourself even more sick even though it's nothing probably. So the, the only thing you need to do is you need to decide what to do and you do it instantly. Like you, you call someone, you book an appointment to the doctor or I don't know. Other thing is you completely uh, accept it. So for example, if I need to write a blog post and it sucks so bad, it's something that I, I, I regret so much. So usually I think like, why did I take this client? He's not even paying that much. Other thing is if I'm not gonna finish I'm going to lose money and I already invested uh, five hours and I need two hours to finish it. So the middle thing is you just accept it, of course, like you have two hours to do it and, uh, and being present even in unpleasant experiences is very important because you're not thinking what could be or what could, uh, could you, you, you've been doing before. So you just need to finish it and you're just accepting it. And we start to suffer when we need... Uh, when we have some cravings or some desires or something. So your suffering of writing that blog post is not because it's very hard, it's because at that time you want to be playing with your, your kids or your family or your, your girlfriend, whatever. And that's what creates uh, the suffering. But once you accept it, you're like, okay, I'm writing, I'm writing, I'm writing, and that's it, you accept it. I'm angry, I'm angry, I'm angry. 
So you're angry, you're accepting that you're writing it, and it becomes much easier to finish it. So, so that's the thing about uh, setting the goals, and uh, of course, like, you need to set goals that are very le relevant to you, and you need to feel that sometimes, okay, I need to push through, and if you need to push through every day, probably the goal is not correct for you. Wow. How does liking your job influence productivity? I think it influences. <laughs> um, is productivity the new religion? I think it's it's it is a new cult in especially in Western world where sleeping five hours a day is is a cool thing to say in an office or saying that I have three part time jobs and I run a startup and then at the same time I'm a full time uh, company CEO. I think it's a cool thing to say in Western world, but Overall, all of these people, they break down eventually, and uh, at least for me, it happened a couple of times. And when I read uh, interviews by, uh, by founders of, of Facebook, the only things they say, I enjoyed everything I did, but I wish I exercised and slept more. So you see all of these patterns coming from all of these people that you want to become, and they're clearly saying, like, do not work for 20 hours straight take a break, exercise, sleep. So I think these are very simple things. They're so easy to do, but we we're just like, oh, I'm just gonna do more in you know, nine hours and I'm gonna sleep less because I wanna watch Game of Thrones for 20 straight hours or something. So, so I think uh, productivity is becoming a new religion, but um, I'm not really interested. Well, I said I'm not religious, so it kind of sounds boo as well. So I'm just gonna stay with my own little meditation world and doing a little work every day. So it's, it's again uh, about, I don't know which, uh, which theory is that, about the average speed. So of course, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in one month you need, let's say, to exercise for 30 minutes uh, for every third day or something. So we add at that time and I'm like, I'm just going to do it in one day and I don't need to exercise for the whole month. So, of course, you can do it, and you can eat for the whole month in one day, and then you can, <laughs> I don't know, probably it's not even possible. But the thing is that your average speed, then uh, you have this result, you, you've, you've done in one day, you need to divide by 30 days, and then your average speed decreases very, very, very much. But if you do little pieces every single day, so for example, uh, for example, when people email me and, and they're like, how to make money online, and I'm like, Okay, you need to figure out how to make your like first one or ten dollars. Like, no, 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 this is not not interested. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in making a thousand dollars in a month and then just like start traveling. And uh, other uh, other alternative is uh, how to start running. And I'm like, you just start running. That's it. You put your shoes on, and the same moment you start running. No, no, I want to go for at least five five days a week. But you know, I don't really have time for it. There's work. There are kids and I cannot really run for five days a week, so I'm like, why you cannot run for one day a week? This is nothing, like, there, there's not going to be any, any difference, why would I waste one day a week running? So that's the thing that people don't see. Even if you are investing very little time every single day, you're actually uh, moving forward much faster with average speed than you are doing, you know, uh, one day you're going to run a, uh, like a marathon and then for the next 30 days you cannot walk because you are you're completely exhausted and you're body is, is not capable of doing that but if you run every single day for just five minutes it's going to be incredibly bigger impact for your for your health and, and for your body instead of just doing it at, at once so I think uh, with that productivity religion is that people are trying to people are trying to to get these results fast and they're going there not for the lifestyle or like not for the journey because of the end result they, they're not interested in the lifestyle at all. So what I'm doing, I, I'm trying to design my lifestyle that I'm enjoying the actual doing thing instead of just being, you know, uh, the end result. So that's the, that's the same thing with productivity. Many people take too many responsibilities because they see only end result, only where would they go to if they, if they succeed, but they miss all that hard work which which not necessarily needs to be hard work if you just split it into 30 days. So 30 kilometers in 30 days and it's one, it's just one kilometer a day. So I think that's, uh, that's what's happening about the productivity.
especially in the uh, Western world. Because if you go to Thailand, they're gonna tell you sambai sambai, which means relax, relax. <laughs> uh, how did I become just as buffed? Okay, <laughs> what sports are you participating in? How do you even find the time right then? Uh, probably I answered that question that uh, the, the first thing I do in the morning is exercise. So it's not really the first thing, but it's like part of my morning routine before all of the work and client calls and like all of these responsibilities that I need to do. And uh, I'm not feeling very good uh, going to the gym every day, but I never skip. And even if I go for 30 minutes, I feel much better than I was, you know, if, if I was just laying in my bed and oh, I feel so tired, uh, probably I'm going to die if I'm going to go and so on. I think at least my brain is, is the best horror movie scenario creator in the world because if I, if I go to the gym and I feel like oh something is with my heart probably I'm gonna, I'm gonna die, probably I should stop and go home so when I wake up in the morning I'm like oh I just got 7 hours 28 minutes of sleep it's not enough for me, probably I should sleep more so all of these different scenarios come up in my head and my brain is trying to trick me to just be in my comfort zone and recently what, what I'm trying to do, I'm just very awkward in, in public and like uh, I really don't like CrossFit because it's very very hard you need to do all these jumping things and like move a lot and for me it's very very challenging uh, last year I went to what's it, what's it called uh, Insanity or uh, My Hero something yeah, yeah, yeah so they have this like uh, gathering and I'm like it's nothing for me I was, I was uh, in athletics for 10 years and I'm going to the gym for the last two years and I ran half marathon last year it's gonna be nothing so I go there and you just need to do simple exercises like this for 60 seconds. <laughs> and then after 45 seconds, like, oh my god, this is impossible. And I see like, all of the girls around me and all the other guys just like enjoy it. Like, oh shit, this is the hardest thing ever. So this is not exactly CrossFit, but for me, doing anything harder than just uh, going for an easy run or playing basketball or just uh, lifting weights, everything else is so hard. So I don't really push myself because at the same time, if I push myself too much, then I'm not that productive throughout the day because again, my brain says, oh, you've been working out so hard, oh, you should just rest. <laughs> because otherwise you're gonna use your mental power and you're gonna fail miserably and all of these burnouts, you know, and I heard about all of these like productivity dips, so don't do it. The last question, or two last questions, uh, does thinking about productivity make you less productive? I <laughs> I'm not really a fan of Kanye West, but he said that he actually doesn't like thinking. <laughs> In an interview, he said, like, you know, like, thinking, it's... I don't really like thinking. I don't really like thinking. <laughs> so that explains a lot of the things that he's doing, but thinking about productivity, I don't think it does make you more productive or less productive, but it can, you, it can distract you a lot, especially if you are working on... Uh, on very important task or very boring task or very challenging task. So when I got my first, I remember when I got my first front end uh, developing job, I had to, to turn a design into working HTML and CSS. And it was the very first thing I, I done for like developing uh, freelance gig. And the moment I started developing, I'm like, maybe I should check what is the best way to do this or that and then I check all of these articles about how to be more productive in HTML and CSS what is the best practice to develop this and that and then I'm listening to, to some uh, Depeche Mode I think I'm like what's the alternative uh, you know music band of Depeche Mode I really like their music there should be something similar and I start researching all the music because this is going to help me in developing <laughs> so I'm like yeah I'm gonna search all of this and then what's the best looking editor for designers so I don't like how code looks on this editor so I'm gonna research for 10 next other code development tools that I can use just to distract myself from the actual work and uh, this, uh, because I already know that I'm, I'm pretty confident I'm, I have capabilities to do it in one day, I'm just going to do it. But at the same time, if, if I land a huge contract, for example, the book is going to be very challenging because I'm already thinking about the bestseller and there are all these hidden fears and all these challenges that wait, uh, wait for me because, oh, if I'm not going to hit a bestseller list, I'm going to be a failure and everyone in my village is going to laugh and so on. <laughs> so, 
so I'm already thinking about this end goal and and being not really aware that you know all this work is, is waiting for me so this uh, this task might be too challenging where again I'm probably gonna start reading a book how to write a book and then, <laughs> and then I'm gonna sign up for a course 10 best ways to, to write a book and, a best, and hit the bestseller list and so on so I think uh, the, the sweet spot is very hard to find, but it has to be challenging enough and, uh, and, and shouldn't be easy for you to, to really slack off. So thinking about productivity, I think, makes you less productive, at least for me, because then I'm going to find all of these amazing cat videos and hidden <laughs> sources of weird things online. Yeah, so that's probably the last question. and. Uh, if, if you guys have any questions, I would be more than happy to answer. Yeah, you mentioned that reading is one of your daily routines. Uh, what do you actually read? Are there like classics, like novels, or mm. work related? So, recently I was... <coughs> actually, last year at Formula, I got a book. Uh, it's where the, probably the, the other room that you yeah. have the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I got the link uh, oh. by Malcolm Clavel. And I really like physical books, I'm reading like physical books, and usually I read uh, business, self-development, or something related to, to my field. So I was reading about writing, I was reading about human history that I was very surprised, I can highly recommend you, Sapiens. It, it can be if you had, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm not really interested well, in it. did you know what they had? <laughs> I'm, I'm not really interested in it, but then I need to swap just because I need to read something. So I was looking for uh, for uh, for a solution, and uh, the one solution was Kindle, iPad, laptop, or or my phone. And I was so pessimistic about my phone because I'm like, oh, you're gonna you know you're gonna break your eyes and you're gonna start crying after two pages, and it's not very uh, very handy to, to to read on on the on the mobile screen. It's too small. But then I saw that okay, if I'm not buying these physical books, um, I'm actually saving the environment. You know. Uh, again, but saving the trees and so on, and I'm more about like being everything in digital instead of printing things and, and so on. Other thing is that I don't really need to, to carry it with me because I can probably fit 1,000 books in my in my phone even more. And uh, the third thing was I need to find a way to to find uh, how to say affordable way to afford all of these books because. Before I was pretty good, I was not reading books at all, and I'm like, oh, this is so good, I'm not really spending much on education. And, <laughs> and then I started reading books, and I see that before, well, to buy a good book, it costs like $30, $40, a nice book. Unless you're Elon Musk, and you're self-teaching yourself, teaching yourself uh, rocket science, there's a book on Amazon that he used, it costs $20,000, so if you're interested in, in, wow. in building... <laughs> In building SpaceX, uh, check that book out. <laughs> but maybe you can find it on torrents for twenty k, for ten k or so. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So, so then I, 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 I decided to to look for ways to really afford these books. And one of the things is Kindle Unlimited. So you pay a subscription like Spotify, and you get all these books. And uh, the one that I use is called Script, and uh, it's also a a subscription model of like <laughs> Spotify or the same as Kindle Unlimited. Real, I pay what like three euro per book or even less. So I think that's a very good one. And also, this thing in increased my reading uh, and probably read just like uh, interested in reading because it says forty percent read and it says for this chapter you have five minutes left. And I'm like, oh, you think you know better? I'm gonna read faster. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm trying to finish uh, finish the chapter in, in four minutes and beat the beat the, the algorithm. I'm not sure if it happens, but it turns out that I, I usually uh, read the book in, in a week or two now, instead of you know going bookless for years. So last year I failed my, my reading challenge of 12 books a year. That was a complete failure. I read probably 9 or 8 books. And this year I have a, a goal of 24 books a year. I'm already on 17th book, so probably I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit the goal. And of course I use another another app, it's called Goodreads, where you have a lot of different recommendations and you see other other people reading books and then you see someone from your friend list reading 100 books uh, this year and you feel like, oh, oh these readers. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so so it's a very good uh, exercise for me to to just uh, raise raise the algorithm and read faster. At the same time, I can I can highlight everything in uh, in, in the in the book and then use it in, in my articles and my my writing. And then other thing, you also see these uh, gamified experiences of people reading other books. And you see like. Oh, someone is reading about cooking steak. Maybe I should go to <laughs> to see them at their house. So, so I think it's also good to to get to know about other people, and then they they, they can recommend you some other things. So yeah, that's the thing. I have a question. Mm. Uh, quite a long one. Uh, first, thanks a lot for the amazing speech. Mm. So to speak, a lot of productive advice. Uh, now, uh, what do you think about distractions? We didn't really talk about it. Well, except mine, uh, usually, so I cannot really plan, uh, well, a couple hours in advance. And then on a global scale, we have uh, Rio Olympics, and as you know, the basketball fans yeah. of Lithuania will have totally fucked up two weeks, yeah. uh, like waking up at night and 1.30 or 4.30. Uh, so, like, you cannot plan that into your routine or plan or anything like that. What do you do with those local distractions yeah. every day and something which, like, it's totally simple. You can you can also just wake up for the for the last two minutes of the match just to see the result. <laughs> so you're not, you're not a fan. <laughs> okay, I, no, I, I, I'm I'm a fan, but uh, I was not spending that much time recently on, on basketball. But probably I'm gonna. They're playing with Spain first. Uh, no, 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 Spain. no, Brazil. Brazil. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Probably I'm gonna see that. Let me just stay. But anyway. Uh, Obviously, these things happen, and for me, the best, uh, aka worst habit I have before my morning routine is to check my, my social networks. So, distractions is that I deleted uh, Twitter, I deleted LinkedIn, I deleted Facebook on my phone, so I cannot really check it. Even email, I don't have email, email on my phone, because on my phone I never reply, because it's just not, uncom not comfortable with my little tiny fingers. But other thing is that... Uh, I would just check as in red and put it back. So it doesn't really give me anything. So what I have on my phone now is just Instagram, Snapchat, and Messenger. Uh, these are three, three or two things that you don't have on, on, on uh, desktop experience. So this is the thing that if I don't check it and perform my morning routine, my, my day, instead of being you know super good, it's just like out of this world. But if I check it, and even if I meditate, I'm still fucked up because I saw some information online. So for me it's just it's just trying to come back to all of it and probably I would say I'm not checking my, my phone, not eating that much and so on, but I'm trying to come back all the time. So some people have like a, a general rule, uh, okay if you're building a habit or you're exercising or writing or trying to achieve something, don't miss twice. So if you missed once, do whatever it takes to, to come back on the track every day. The other day, so for me it's fine just to uh, just to come back. I wouldn't say I'm I'm not I'm not the one who is like don't miss twice. Probably I, I I didn't meditate for like a week, and I'm like probably I should come back to meditation. So I'm always trying to come back, and and many people think like oh you're a robot, you're doing this and that, and like this is boring. Like your your routine should be boring for three hours, and of course like it gets boring sometimes, but. But it's, it's not that I'm doing it every day. On the weekends, I have completely free program and I can go whatever. I can become a, an actor and go, go, go act on, on the street on the weekend. So on the weekends, I have this, you know, do of nothing, a lot of mess in my life. But at the same time, when I'm traveling, and especially uh, I, was, I, was, I was staying in, in Japan for two, two weeks. So the week before, my productivity is like, hmm, what are the things to do in Japan? Probably this is very important, I should check because if I go there I waste my time not knowing what to look there. So when I go there in two weeks I'm like, hmm, I'm flying back to Lithuania after 10 months, should be exciting, what should I do in Lithuania? <laughs> so, so that's the thing, that in these probably couple of weeks I was not that productive, not really following my, my routine, but at the same time if your routine is three hours, you can completely collapse it down to to even just like 15 minutes. So instead of uh, instead of okay drinking water, you cannot drink it. Okay.
okay, instead of drinking two glasses, you can drink half a glass a little bit much quicker. <laughs> then instead of uh, meditating for 10 minutes, you can just take 10 deep breaths, right? So that's pretty quick. Uh, instead of writing, you can, uh, you can probably just uh, watch uh, basketball now. If they work out in the morning, they're going to be like, oh, I'm, I'm going to be so tired uh, in the morning and I need to go to work. I'm not going to go work out. But if they were working out for 60 minutes and now they're going to do just five minutes, so not even going outside, just doing push-ups, maybe running around the, around the room and then uh, doing some stretching, that's still going to be beneficial for their, for their day. So I think just uh, adapting a little bit and then uh, assuming that you're human and that you're going to fail and then just keep coming back, I think that's, at least for me, this is what works. Thank you for coming, by the way. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.